cats began their unique relationship with humans 10,000 to 12,000 years ago in the Fertile Crescent, the geographic region where some of the earliest developments in human civilization occurred. As people abandoned their nomadic lifestyle and settled permanently to farm the land, stored grain attracted rodents. Taking advantage of this new, abundant food source, Middle Eastern wildcats preyed on the rodents and decided to stick around these early towns, scavenging the garbage that all human societies inevitably produce. Just as feral cats do today. Over thousands of years, a new species of cat eventually evolved that naturally made its home around people. Today, pet, stray, and feral cats belong to the species that we call the domestic cat. And with the domestic cat came a new species of human known as Felina Domina, also known as the Cat Lady. Heather is a 29-year-old female from the United States, and she is a cat lady. I keep pictures of them in frames around my house. He's on the phone, you can tell. Uh, he's great at holding a conversation and uh, being empathetic and giving just the right amount of constructive criticism. Look at his cute little nose right there, and his little green eyes, his little paw holding the phone even though he doesn't have opposable thumbs. He's the sweetest little croissant ever. Look at him. Okay, just gonna put it in. Boop. And there's his little tiny horn. A little Christmas stocking. It's actually a regular sized Christmas stocking. But she's so mischievous. She wore it as a Santa hat. And this is her setting up her Christmas decorations for the holiday. And there's some gingerbread man down there. And some mint lollipop candy tree. Big snowman. She loves the snow. Christmas lights. Uh, both my cats are a big fan of Christmas trees. Um, I think they just get so into it, into the spirit of things. They they just launch themselves into the tree when I put it up, and they uh, bite all the lights, and sometimes they break the ornaments. But, uh, I think it's because they're just so full of spirit. Look at Troll Cat. He's so dapper. He's in a little bowler hat right there. And he has some teapots. And a teacup right over here. And a little bouquet of flowers. Um, he's very fancy. And he likes the sophisticated things in life. You know, he's a man who knows what he wants. Isn't he cute? Look at his little nose right there. <laughs> no, I just love him. <laughs> he, he's actually not uh, that big a fan of tea. Uh, he prefers water. Or um, he also likes ice cream and cheese. I'm just like everyone else. I love Breaking Bad. Dead, 
Bates Motel, Game of Thrones, Chocolate, Zumba. I loved Zumba. Singing in the shower, putting on concerts in my car, and dancing. And I happen to love cats. A lot. My cats are more than my pets. They're my friends. Uh, they're like tiny little people in adorable furry bodies. <laughs> They have their own personalities and quirks. Uh, I have one cat who carries a little baby around in his mouth. It's a worm. Uh, and my other cat has a, a fearsome bloodlust for rubber ducks. She hates them. What is a cat lady? How do you know if you encounter one in the wild? Cat ladies have a few telltale indicators. Their clothing is adorned with cat hair, no matter the occasion. Cat ladies frequently employ tools to camouflage themselves, among others in their species. Heather's tool of choice is the lint roller. Picks up the hair and it makes you look more presentable. It's even on my hat. And no matter what you do, it always comes back, so you just roll it. Good. And sometimes you need little baby gremlins all over the place except they're popping cat hair and see that's all the dirt you pull off of it another indicator is what the scientific community calls c r h v b t s also known as cat induced high voice baby talk syndrome when in the presence of a cat a cat lady's voice will change. She will default to caregiver speech. A simplified speech pattern with distinctive paralinguistic features of high pitch and exaggerated intonation that is usually associated with speech to babies and children. This includes soft cooing, affirmations, shorter utterances, and speaking in an unusually melodious fashion. 
Oh, hello, Mr. Man. I love you so much. Yes, I do. Don't you know that I love you so much? Oh, so cute. Oh, so cute. You're so cute. You're the cutest thing in the whole world. Who's the best little kid in the whole world? Are you so cute? You're so cute. Look at your triangle face. Oh, who's got the cutest triangle face in the world? You do. Yes, you do. Look at your triangle face. Yeah. You can also distinguish a cat lady by the fervor in her eyes when she spots a cat. This manifests itself as a twinkle in her eye because of the sincerity of the joy she feels upon viewing a cat. The partial eyelid closure component of a sincere smile causes a deeper tear film on the surface of the eye. This leads to more reflectivity in each eye and larger pupils. Cat ladies, though biologically no different from other humans, are susceptible to a specific malady called dying from cuteness that many cat ladies suffer each year. I've had a few close calls. It hits you out of nowhere. heart seizes up because it's so cute and it feels like your heart wants to burst from its chest like a face hugger from aliens and hug the cutest cat you ever did see that day. I can... I'm sorry, this is hard. I came home one day and I saw a troll cat. And uh, I guess I startled him, and he uh, poofed out, if you know, where their tails get all big, and he looked like a, a giant orange cotton ball, and I thought, this is it. It's so fluffy, I'm gonna die. Heather was quick to point out that the benefits to owning her cats far outweighed the risks. Aside from companionship, there are those who argue that cats provide additional benefits. There are claims that exposure to cats at a young age can help prevent allergies and respiratory issues in children. Cat owners are less likely to have cardiovascular disease and heart attacks. Owning a cat may lower your cholesterol and triglycerides. Petting a purring cat can lower stress and blood pressure. Cats often purr when being fed or pet, but researchers believe there is more to purring than meets the ear. Cats also purr while under duress or while recovering from injury or ailment. Scientists assert cats produce the purr through an intermittent signaling of the laryngeal and diaphragmatic muscles during both inhalation and exhalation. They employ a consistent pattern and frequency between 25 and 150 hertz. Sound frequencies in this range can improve bone density and promote healing. Do cat ladies possess knowledge that others don't? Some will argue that science has yet to prove that cats can improve one's health. However, few will argue that cat ladies know something else that most don't. Bad cat pun jokes. Yeah, do you know why cats don't play poker in the wild? <laughs> do 
too many cheetahs. But, uh, seriously? Do you know how uh, cats maintain law and order in the wild? Claw enforcement? <laughs> I'm sorry, I'm stopping. Oh, um, there was this really big story on Reddit, uh, seriously, seriously, there was a really big story on Reddit a while back, and you might want to bring it up with your, um, associate, to see if you want to include it in the story, because it does have to do with cats, um, did you see it? It was a, a story about a cat who swallowed a ball of wool. <sighs> yeah, um, she had mittens. Why is the camera person filming the cat lady documentary so grumpy? The camera person's in a bed. Mewed. Mew. Mew and mood. Okay, I'm done. Cat ladies frequently keep toys handy for the entertainment of their cats and therefore themselves really pretty tinsel type ribbons and a tiny little bell where's the bell? Oh. right there so this is how you play with it you can make it Floor and have them chase after it like that for exercise. I think it's really cute. It's blue and pink and green and gold and yellow. It's kind of funny for them, I think. I also have this little cat brush. It has a, a rubber handle for you to hold on tightly to because when you're brushing your cats, they're gonna uh, move around a lot because it feels so good. So this part's for you, and this part is for your cats. So it looks like a bunch of needles, but and they are rather sharp, honestly. You don't want to brush your own hair with this. This is the only um, duck left because Tiny Horse hates ducks. So, unfortunately, this old gal is all alone now. I have no idea where her uh, duck brethren have gone to. Not all cat ladies are created equally. One of Heather's hobbies is something that sets her apart from her cat lady peers. She writes fictional romance stories about characters that happen to be cats. I'm writing a new cat novella. Well, it's kind of hard to explain if you haven't read the other books in my series. But, um, I'll try my best to, uh, um, Admiral Applesauce has just returned from abroad, and he doesn't know that Chairman Megatron has been seeing Lady Baguette in his absence. Lady Baguette is feeling really conflicted, because she doesn't know who to choose now that Admiral Applesauce is back in the picture. To make matters worse, her best friend, Blueberry Sparklepants, is in love with Chairman Megatron and is pregnant with his litter, but the only person who knows is Dr. Taco, and he's not telling anyone 
because he's going to try to blackmail Chairman Megatron before Blueberry Sparkle Pants starts showing him. Uh, another bombshell in the series is that Admiral Applesauce had a secret as well, and that's that he was involved in uh, Lady Baguette's brother's disappearance. So, no one's seen Captain Pancake since the ninjas raided the museum. Heavy stuff. Mark Twain said, Of all God's creatures, there is only one that cannot be made slave of the leash. That one is the cat. If man could be crossed with a cat, it would improve the man, but deteriorate the cat. Is a cat lady the cross of which Twain spoke of? Or is she a different breed entirely? Coraline asks the cat what his name is, and the cat says he doesn't have a name. And uh, Coraline says, you don't have names? And the cat says, people have names. That's because you don't know who you are. We know who we are, so we don't need names. Heather doesn't have any concerns about how she and other cat ladies are perceived. Owning our story can be hard. But it's not nearly as difficult as spending our lives running from it. Embracing our vulnerabilities is risky, but not nearly as dangerous as giving up on love and belonging and joy. Perhaps home is not a place, but simply an irrevocable condition. Our sense of belonging can never be greater than our level of self-acceptance. I'm okay with who I am. I hope you are too. Though there is still much to learn about cat ladies, one thing is for certain. They are here to stay. Do me a favor, hun. Look up. Look down. Do you look to your right? And to your left. 